40 years of China's opening and reform, I look back, remembering the changes. In 1981, I came here as a student. I became a lawyer and economist, working with China ever since. I advised foreign investors entering China and work with the Chinese government, drafting the regulations that made it happen. In the 1990s with globalization, I helped China reform state-owned enterprises, turning them into multinational corporations that would compete on the global stage. In the past decades, I advised on environmental policy that would help China become the world's leader on renewable energy. I have not just observed, but also participated in each stage of China's reform and opening. Now, it's time to tell the story of these past 40 years of reform and opening that has made China the global economy that it is today. It is not about looking back, but learning how we got here and looking toward the future that we will create together. Join me, Lawrence Brom, for China, 40 years of reform and opening and marathon talks with behind the scenes stories from the experts and innovators who are the change that China will be. China, reform and opening, 40 years in perspective. Hi, I'm Lawrence Brown. And I'm Li Jiao. Well, Li Jiao? Wait a minute. Yep. Xin yeah. Meng was here yesterday. What I want to be here. Really? Yeah. Is that, a com is that a compliment? Uh, well, we talked about um, gender empowerment yesterday. That's right, yes. You mentioned a lady called um, Wu Zetian. She was the first woman emperor or empress to mm -hmm. rule China in the Tang Dynasty. Well, her name is also in my. Really? Yeah. So are you going to be like the woman empress or emperor? Our generation is going to take over with the newest technologies. I don't believe you. Let me show you this. So your generation used this. Uh, yeah. After I use a few this. years, you guys update to this one. Of course, this is and very. This one, but look at this hey, is. Something... I love rock and roll. This is pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. But you know, our generation used this. Oh, Have you ever seen a phone with this big of the large screen ever? Oh, I see. Here's a this... smiley face. What's going on here? <laughs> Tell me about a... this. Well. Mm. Well, let's talk about that later. But this is the newest iPhone XS Max. Really? Yeah. And where is this going to go? What's the future? Well, um, let's give our audiences some background information on China's you know, progress on technology for the four, four years. Take a look at the package. China, the ancient land which gave the world the four great inventions of the compass, gunpowder, paper making, and printing. In 1978, the country ushered in a new milestone for science and technology as it began to reform and open up. In that year, the National Science Conference was held, bringing about what was known as the Spring of Science. In the past 40 years, Chinese scientists have made significant progress in the fields of basic science, engineering, agricultural, and information technology. China can now ride the dragon to explore the deep seas, wear the eye of the sky to observe the universe, pinpoint destinations through the Beidou navigation system, and engage in ultra-secure quantum communications. China has transformed from a follower to a leader in many technological fields. The country now stands ready to enter a new era of science, technology, and innovation. But there are controversies surrounding China's technological advances. Some say that China's scientific achievements today can match that of any country in the world, while others argue that China still lags behind many leading economies in technology and innovation. So, what is the true picture of China's development in science, technology, and innovation? A reform and opening, 40 years in perspective, and today we're talking about China's quantum leap in technology from the central business district of Beijing, Kerry Center. Mm -hmm. Just to give you guys a more comprehensive view, we have some pretty cool guests in store today. We got some very cool guests. Let's introduce Thanks. them. These That's are the leaders it. of technology today. We're going to begin today with Alex 
Lin, and he's the founder of China Value New Economy Investments. And also Greg Shea, he is the president of Young Brothers. Adele Hu, straight from Chengdu, she's a career coach for young people entering the field of technology. And Richard Robinson, he is a founding partner at NHAC. And Zhou Yu, who is with CNN, CGTN anchor, and he's been with me on a lot of programs. We've been talking about a lot of changes. You've been covering some of the biggest events that have happened in China's modern history. Tell me, for technology, development, and change, what would be the three big events that you've covered mm -hmm. that are breakthroughs in China's quantum technology leap? Uh, first of all, I'm very glad uh, to be here talking to you. But usually, I'm the interviewer t asking questions to you, Lawrence, and I'm very happy the other way around. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, there's quantum leaves in terms of technology development in China. Uh, I have been very lucky to have been done some reporting on some of the major events. The first thing that came to my mind is probably 2003. I was covering China's first manned space program. I was very close to China's first taikonaut, uh, Yang Liwei, when he was sent into space. You have to remember that uh, in the 1970s, China even couldn't produce cars and trucks. So in 2003, that was a big thing for China, although the United States did it in the 1960s. But that technology is different from the 60s, when China was to do it. It is a systematic overhaul of uh, space technology. Mm. How China wanted to test it out, all things from rocket engines, navigation, telemetry, all those things is what, what China says. It is a representation of the comprehensive national strength mm. of a country. And I was up close to that moment and saw how the Chinese scientists and engineers made the plans and executed the plan as they did. Although there were also some moments that uh, raised eyebrows and people were worried. For example, during the liftoff of Yang Liwei, the vibration inside the cabin made him very uncomfortable. And that is something that the Chinese first tested out. And when they did it again, uh, several years later, that vibration problem was solved. That is space technology, one example. The other one is how uh, big data and uh, robot, robotic technology has been developing here in this country. I was in JD.com uh, headquarters. Now they're planning to have drones deliver their uh, merchandise to the doorsteps of people buying stuff. And they know who are those people who want to buy what. Because of big data, they have all the data information about their customers, potential customers, and current customers. One good example is that when that phone you just showed us, when Apple launched their latest version of phones, mm -hmm. they have the data in place say, so they know what kind of a people are the mostly likely customers to purchase the new versions of the iPhones. So they store, pre-store all those iPhone sets in a particular, war a particular warehouse. They know where customers are most uh, likely to show up and buy. And so in a matter of two hours, those customers got the first version mm -hmm. of those iPhones. That's because they have data about customers. Wait, and so I have a question. Deliver. So even before they even launched this new phone, they already knew like what kind of people What will... kind of people and where? Oh. So they where? can where they are, where they do live. They know what kind of people they want, what kind of information they have, what kind of a newspaper they read, what kind of gadgets they use normally, what they have bought before. So that's why big data has been changing commerce in this country dramatically. And also because China obviously has a huge customer base. That's why data is in such a huge supply. And that's why many companies have been using, capitalizing on that advantage. Data. How are you using data? And you're making investments all across the board and incubating different companies. How important is data for you to un make your decisions in China? Yeah, yeah. The, the data is very important, uh, not not just in Chinese, but, but also in a world, worldwide uh, uh, perspective. And I, I would like to give a, a little bit response about uh, uh, he 
he, 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 his question and, and, and his answer. Because uh, uh, every people know, uh, well, one of our uh, uh, job now is focusing on investment for artificial intelligence. But, but not, not many people know uh, artificial intelligence uh, already developed or underdeveloped maybe more than uh, six to, to seven decades mm -hmm. uh, that, that long. But why, why uh, people, the, the AI get people's uh, mo most attention uh, this field two, two or three few years because the data. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because right now uh, the, the computer uh, we, we call it uh, uh, ca calculating power mm -hmm. now is already very uh, powerful enough and, and we can accumulate a lot of lot of tons of data otherwise we, 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 ca we cannot leverage the, the, the intelligent stuff mm -hmm. so uh, in, in every angle or from every degree we can say data will be the next uh, Intel inside. The reason why I, 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 I say Intel is because I, well, one of my previous jobs is in, in Intel. So every people know how the, the CPU, the chip uh, is important for a computer. Down, down, so, down, down. Yeah, down, 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 down. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think it, it's, it's the first uh, uh, AD uh, song in the, in, in the history. Exactly, right? yeah. Yeah, so, 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 uh, we, 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 can, we can consider it uh, uh, it's really, really important. And even uh, I, I, I know a Chinese government already set up some uh, big data uh, center, for example, in Guizhou province. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And, and, and uh, uh, that strategy already uh, reached the national level strategy. Mm -hmm. So uh, how important you say it, 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 it can... Uh, uh, diverse. I want to add one point. Why this is an inflection point for, for computing technology, big data. One thing is the computing power of computers has increased dramatically. The other one is that everybody get access to the internet and they provided their information to different platforms and those platforms can use those data and algorithm to make calculations and predict your behaviors and maybe change your behaviors in the future. Mm -hmm. That's why it is a huge thing now in China. People now argue who is going to take the lead, the US or China, in terms of artificial intelligence. I don't think it is a matter of who's taking the lead. America is probably better at developing algorithms, discover new ways of making math, but China is doing is better at providing information and applications. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I don't think there should be a separation or decoupling of those two sides, but rather they should join hands to develop this artificial intelligence technology. And you've just raised an issue here, China-US relations on technology. And Greg, I remember you were actually the US technology representative here for a yes, number it was of years. Called the, it is called the USIT office. And you were here representing yes. American technology companies, is yes. that right? And and the major industry associations. And what were some of the steps and challenges and problems that were in the negotiations that have actually led up to this trade war today? Or is there even a need for a trade war? Uh, hmm. No, I don't believe there is. Um, I believe that it's largely tactical. Um, and in the end of the day, the strategic collaboration based on symmetries and complementarities will continue. Mm. Nature finds a way and will continue to find a way. And I think your illustration with AI is a very good one. Uh, some of the very best beacons of uh, innovation in the pure software architecture continue to be reside in, in the West and in the US. Increasingly, they're coming up here as well. Mm. So. The development is happening. But then the, the, the Metcalf effect, the size of the network, which is also a critical component of innovation, is increasingly here. So now it's 1x the US, and then it's 2x the US network size, and then it's 3x as the largest in the world. And each time you add another bucket, you're adding another set of synergies that happen in deployment and actual use cases, mm. which are scaling and, and, and very rugged and very, very capable. So the, yeah, the, the complementarity of, of the cooker and the applier then loops back 
to more cooking and more applying. Yes. You see? So that, that's the essential symmetry that you see between these two major economies, the two largest economies in the in world. They're also world. a hurdy-gurdy mm. of innovation. In, in this age of acceleration, mm. there's just not possible to turn back the interconnectedness yes. of technologies Correct. and resources. Yes. And there's naturally uh, competition. It's in, in our DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, since our precursors, if you look at uh, our anthropologists, you know, since earlier forms of mammals mm -hmm. and apes and such, there's always hierarchies of capacity, capability. Mm -hmm. It's natural. It's in our DNA. Mm -hmm. um, and that and the, the whole thing is, is that you want to construct. Politicians don't recognize the fact. True. There is but, a place for certain people in technology in a hierarchy yes. in a way to connect Correct. and cooperate. Correct. So you, you, you look for uh, managing what is natural for us to be competitive, but in a way which is constructive rather than dissipative, mm. if you look at it in terms of energy theory or game theory. So I, I think for the most part, our leaders in our industrial policy and planning and in our corporations, both in government and in business, uh, are sophisticated enough to understand this. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just ask a question, mm -hmm. because Adele, if, I, yeah. if I'm correct, you just returned from the U.S., you've yeah. been on the East Coast University mm -hmm. studying technology, and now you're in Chengdu, mm -hmm. working in the tech field, coaching young people in the tech field. What do you see about this U.S.-China technology dispute? Uh, what, I mean, is there a reason for a dispute? I agree with Alex and um, Greg are saying is that um, I actually see more similarities between the U.S. and China than the uh, disparities because, you know, more and more people, um, you know, from what I saw, um, I just graduated from college, and more and more people are joining the STEM um, field and, you know, majoring in uh, computer science, majoring in all other kind of science um, you know, fields, and um, they are going into technology. And right now, I just returned from the U.S. and I'm working with this um, computer educational institute. And we're taking uh, tens of thousands of people every year for different boot camps because they didn't have these courses, for example, in their colleges at the time, or they didn't study relevant fields. But they see this trend. They see that AI technology and all the um, you know big data, data sciences have been going going uh, forward so fast and um, the job market um, so I'm um, you know I see the people that um, who graduate and are going into these fields they are they look for jobs and there are high demands out there for these technicians people with um, these technical tech skill sets mm -hmm. um, and they're being employed in um, both in the US and China mm -hmm. so there are just there should just be more cooperation in developing, you know, moving the technology forward. And um, just now, Greg and I, and I were talking about this um, constructive dynamic competition. Yeah, or constructive of dynamic tension, tension, which underpins yes. good competition. Exactly. So competition mm -hmm. actually drives, you know, people forward. Your students are on GitHubs. Right, yeah. GitHub's and they're Chinese the and American artists. and Indian. They're all there. They don't care about yeah, the passport. Yeah, exactly. They care they about the capacity and the, and the contribution to yeah. the socialized, if you will, innovation. Yeah, whichever yeah. nationality you're from, you, yeah. you can all get on these um, you know, websites and um, study the, using these resources. Mm -hmm. And Richard, you actually came here, I think, in the 90s. Is that right? 25 uh, years ago by train through Siberia, yes. Wow, <laughs> and you were actually the genius behind some of the early startup China tech companies. You were actually bringing ideas in. Is that right? Uh, I was behind that. I wouldn't uh, classify it as genius, but but uh, <laughs> it was I'll in one of your bags. Right? On, on it was in one of your bags. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah. So I, I first came here in '93, and it was much closer to Mao than to now. Right? It was yeah. a totally different era. Um, yeah. But you could smell that this was the biggest story of our life. Yeah. The rural to urban migration, the increase in GDP per capita, I just felt that the energy here, you know, you say like, like, like hot noise in China. And, and indeed, you go to any Chinatown around the world and you feel that electricity and that buzz. And you come here and, wow, in the, in, in the belly of the dragon and you can mm -hmm. just like see that fire burning. And and do you I, imagine how China would become 25 years? Boy, not even, I don't think anybody could, could, could yeah. imagine, right? Yeah. Even if you look at like, you know, GDP since zero, 
to to now. You know, the first eighteen hundred years, China was so was so dominant. Mm -hmm. It was mostly a function of population, but also because of innovation and because of you know also the societal mores. And then the last two hundred years, you know, have been you know kind of uh, challenging. Uh, while, a short rough while, patch. Yeah, while, while, while America <laughs> rose, and now yeah. you know China is regaining its seat um, at the table, and I, I, I wanted a front row seat at the show, mm -hmm. and I, I just I just wanted to to be here, and I've I've been lucky to kind of been buoyed up by the whole. Well, ninety three was a really good time to come, mm. right? Because uh, it was ninety two that uh, Mr. Dung went Dung south, went to south. Right. and uh, yeah, I think the val revalidation, shall yeah. we say, of the reform and opening, which had gone through some period of. Uh, mm reconsideration mm -hmm. was very, very convin convincingly asserted. Yeah. So I think since then you see this 10% annual and, and all those macro numbers. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was absolutely, I remember the timing, yeah. 93. And I was born in the 90s. I remember my first cell phone was like in 2005 or something. Okay. And then I got this orange screen, like yeah. flip phone. Uh -huh. And you can use only for uh -huh. texting and yeah. calling, right? right? Yeah. But it was and still then, magical. Yeah, yeah, it was it was wonderful. Like I, 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 I could get yeah. in touch with my parents. Window to the world, yeah. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. and, you, you were know, using no. Cell phones in '93? No, no, no. 90, I was born in the oh, '90s, okay. and then she was um, born and she had a call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. '93, I probably got a call. '93, from, I was yeah, the somewhere. first time I, I used pager mm. rather than pager. Mm. I remember my dad. You remember used the pager? Da, da, da. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't have phones back then. No, there were one or two people that, with that the big a, brick. Yeah. They uh, yeah, put yeah, it on yeah. the table. Oh, yeah, totally. It cost ten thousand dollars. We call it da da back then. He's he's a very rich guy. Yeah. And can't of normal people couldn't afford it. Yeah, and it was expensive. In, in internet, uh, we 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 use a very spe special uh, term t terminology to okay. describe this kind of phenomena. Uh, well, well, one of famous uh, uh, professor in uh, Harvard University, called, he, his name is Bankler. He he coined a name called uh, uh, internet uh, uh, native citizen mm. or internet immigrant. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he 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 defined uh, maybe uh, we are uh, all immigrants. The people. Yeah. <laughs> She's no, a no. native. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. not. Maybe <laughs> not. Let, let, let me <laughs> elaborate. Uh, yeah. let, let me explain a little bit. Yeah. yeah, uh, he, yeah the, the professor said maybe uh, people uh, born uh, before ninety. Uh, Eighty-five, uh, they are, they are, they are immigrants yeah. because because uh, in, in, in their life, uh, w w when they become grown up, there's, there's still no internet there. Yeah. They have to learn yeah. how to uh, immigrate. Yeah. But after that, he said, uh, those people, uh, they are native uh, immigrant. But uh, uh, very interesting, there are also a, a third, third party or a third group of people. Uh, that, that, that's why. Uh, we, we, we define ourselves, the people like me, uh -huh. uh, li li like us, we, we define us like an uh, internet builder. Uh -huh. no, 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 not immigrant, uh, also right. not, not, yeah. not Architect, uh, native. Yeah. 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 You manipulated all, all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. But, you but, built but, a life from Ireland. I, I yeah. yeah. but, but then, then if you look at my children who are teens now, yeah. there's actual data that shows that when they're touching their phone, uh -huh. their hand lights up Structure. here as if they're touching Different. their own hand. Huh. Uh -huh. right? So they're like There's another, another organ. cyborg. There's another yeah, organ. It's another organ, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you think about wow. the future of like augmented reality and virtual reality. Right. It is at once incredible and horrific, right? Yeah, because yeah. it is like the Matrix. It's so... Ab ab absor you know, absorbing, so, right? Yeah. So right now, they're in these you know, yeah. uh, computers or, or phones. What about when my kids have kids that yeah. age? You're going to have this fully immersive environment, and mm -hmm. yeah. wow, with it, it, AIs, and you know, nowadays AI, yeah. we see like two-year-olds playing mm -hmm. with their iPad, and yeah. you know, just very smoothly. Or, or, or my, my two-year-old taking a magazine and right. trying to make the picture oh, right. bigger, and then the yeah, yeah, zoom yeah. and pinching, <laughs> oh and, and all that. And <laughs> I, I didn't even. I've do got that. a question though, Adele. Yeah. Now you're coaching uh, young people, trying to get them jobs in yeah. technology. Uh -huh. I, I've got a serious question. Okay. We're going to have AI coming on. All the robots are going to take all the menial. <laughs> jobs what are people going to do now are you telling people are you trying to have people train as robots i mean what's i mean what's no, the future but, look like know, are there going to be jobs people who are going to these jobs are like alex the land builders for our future generation it doesn't mean that technology is completely replacing human race that's 
you know, that's, I don't think that that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, technology and all these AIs and machine learning, these are going to be the future trend. And these are going to be what's happening and building up even far more advanced technology and for, you know, to make our lives easier. And, you know, we have robots, smart robots, and uh, I guess now we only have maybe Siri and, you know, the answer our, uh, you know, pick up our calls in order to reply messages. But we already have smart robots who can have conversations Conversations. We um, in fintech, there are robo uh, advisors, you know, to help people make um, investment decisions, and these are happening and in, in, in the future. As well. Yeah, in healthcare as healthcare. well. Healthcare. Yeah. Can we talk about that for a minute? I mean, most people don't know. I have actually titanium in my leg. Years ago, mm -hmm. I was disabled. I couldn't walk. You in must technology. light up the uh, airports. Yeah, I do all, all the oh, time. Wow. And you know, now I'm, I, I'm a third degree black belt in martial arts mm -hmm. because I can now move again. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. now, what's going to happen with this? Are we going to? Is everybody going to be like Doctor Strange? Like what? <laughs> the future look like? Well, actually, I, I see it as the sequence, which you look at the 40 years of the reform, mm -hmm. and I think one of the most critical tactical decisions or strategic that was made by the government in China was get the networks going. So at similar points of development in, in other parts of human history, you don't see the leaders of a polity saying, fiber optic cable before road to village, but you did here. So the, the reason why China has surprised everyone, and, and I also have been very optimistic and always wrong mm -hmm. about when China reaches certain benchmarks, and I think it will continue, um, is that the network effect was engineered in by enlightened uh, industrial uh, governmental collaboration, mm. and that this continues. Now, when it comes to the next layer, like health, so you start with enabling the network, then you, you populate the network with devices so people mm -hmm. can communicate people to people. You unleashed productivity like never in human history. When the Chinese went from 1% who could read and write effectively, or maybe 5, mm -hmm. to just about everyone, and they had networks to do it on. Mm -hmm. So that's the explosion. It's of karmic. Mm -hmm. And then, then after that, the devices, and you get into the industrial layer, and then you get into the social layer. Now we're coming into the social layer, right? So we're enabling uh, big data and analytics. Mm -hmm. But now it's infusing itself into industries right into education, health, and welfare. Right. So you're getting intelligence and efficiencies there. And did you think yeah. the network effect take place because of the visions of the leaders or it happened by chance? No, I think that the, the leaders were visionary in recognizing it. Mm -hmm. There was theory out there, that was, and there was examples in Silicon Valley. Heavily benchmarked. I represented HP. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Packard came over in 1977 mm -hmm. before relations. Mm -hmm. And they made a and that was really the beginning of this strategic interaction between Silicon Valley, which was benchmarked. Mm -hmm. What are they doing there? They're creating network elements. They're creating uh, compute engines. All these building blocks. Mm -hmm. Let's emulate that. And so then just carry it forward to the, to the present. Mm -hmm. And President Xi has this plan for China to be the innovative leader by 2025. What do you guys think of it? Like, do you think it's um, you know, a realistic goal? Um, when I think about reform and opening up 40 years ago, people uh -huh. always say that Deng Xiaoping uh, liberated a country's economy uh, or, or opened itself uh, to the outside world. But I think what is most important is that he actually set the Chinese people's imagination free. He, he, he let the Chinese do whatever they want and to do mm -hmm. and, and network with mm -hmm. whoever they want, exactly. go wherever they want. And this kind of a network effect mm -hmm. uh, make people tap into their potential. Correct. They can do things they could never have dreamed of mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. That's the thing to set off the productivity change, mm -hmm. that upgrade for decades to come mm -hmm. until now. Mm -hmm. And it's still going on. Mm -hmm. I think that is the most liberating factor of the Chinese economy mm. four sure. years ago. When I heard Greg talk about government guidance for business and technology, I saw your eyes light up. It's mm. either because your kid's electrical gadget in your pocket began to blink or that somehow hit a nerve with you. Mm. What was going through your mind at that second? Well, uh, I, I think two things. One, I, was, I wanted to talk about healthcare and AI, but also about, you know, typically government guidance. I think one of the best things a government can do is step out of the way and, and allow that, uh, you know, thousand flowers to bloom or, you know, uh, you know, often I bridge from Silicon Valley a lot of companies coming in here, and the narrative is, oh, companies fail here because they get um, you know uh, support from the government and because they're uh, it's a copycat economy here, right? I agree. What what I really think is that 
The real narrative here, what I see every day in the trenches, is that it is gladiatorially, mm -hmm. insanely competitive yeah. mm -hmm. and quite innovative. Yeah. So that's actually what's happening here, and then uh, that's how, how the, how the, how the but, tech... But the audience in the West don't with. get that narrative. They, they, they still they think... Don't know. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what, what, what do you think is missing there? Why they can't see that technologies is not a, a stagnant thing? It mm -hmm. evolves all the time. Mm -hmm. You learn some technologies mm -hmm. there, you edit new yeah. things, it becomes another thing. Yeah. China is good at processing it and applying those technology and make it to another level. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I think uh, partially in the West, it's been uh, a little bit of uh, self-delusion. You know, where Silicon Valley is this font of innovation and, you know, China is this place where, um, you know, of course it's cheaper and they can copy stuff, but really, you know, there's not a lot of innovation happening. happening that, that's there, a right? stereotype. It, 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 it's a stereotype. Yeah. But, then, but, but then I think also there's, there's a much stronger window into Silicon Valley from here than the other way around. Mm -hmm. you know, right now, the most valuable startup in the world is you know, right down the road here, um, ByteDance, Jinder Hotel, yeah. worth $75 billion. And mm -hmm. it's worth more than Uber, worth more than any other, other startup. Yeah. Yeah. The average person, even in Silicon Valley, would have no visibility or no idea about that. Yeah. Yeah. So China's very opaque to them just because most Chinese uh, unicorns, and last count there's about 180 of them uh -huh. out of 300 something. So probably more than half the world's unicorns, mm -hmm. companies worth more than a billion dollars, are here in China. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most of them are very inwardly focused. So they still live in parallel universe. Completely parallel yeah, universe. In China. They don't know much about each other. Well, no, 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 no. I, I, I would contend that the average person here Chinese knows, knows a lot. Chinese knows a lot. Okay. Okay. A lot yeah. and is, is able so is the laws like, of American consumers and innovators mm. and maybe decision makers to understand what is really going on in China. It's so tough, right? And because tap it. Because think about it. Yeah. You, don't, you don't read or, or write or speak Chinese. And, and they're not watching really CDTN. The <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. But then again, it's all yeah. about zhou chu chu, right? It's, it's yeah. the ability to project and go abroad. Mm. And this is, this is critical to this yeah. asymmetry that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Of um, information. Yes, and now, now that that idea of going abroad and enabling people culturally mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and otherwise to be able to make the, uh, the leap from this big walled garden, if you yeah. will, of 1.4 mm -hmm. billion people, it's a pretty yeah. big petri dish, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can support a whole lot of unicorns. Yeah. But then they do need to be able to find their way overseas. Some of them are. It's already happening. And more, yeah, it's and more of them need yeah. to be able to do that. And then that will shift, like yeah. Alibaba, obviously. Yeah. But yeah. there are others. Yeah. That, it, it will shift, shift a lot the more. perception. There needs yes. to be a lot more. So it's a phase yeah. shift. That's all I see it. It's, it's a cultural, adaptive phase shift and it'll take 10 or another 10 years. But, but, but yeah. I, I also want to talk about AI. That's what, that's what mm -hmm. lit me up. Mm -hmm. and I want to say, first of all, that I welcome our machine overlords <laughs> when you take over AI and become self-aware. I'm, I'm on board. I don't know if everybody else is. So. You are pessimistic? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm welcoming the machine yeah. overlords when they take over the world because I know you're listening to this. So we need Elon. I'll tell you this. I had breakfast. I with, want to get cloned with, with so I can have more of me on more different <laughs> shows and do more things, you know. <laughs> the the bronze zone. Ten of you yeah. playing and, Tai Chi. And, and, and also an, another angle. Uh, uh, you, you, you mentioned one angle, uh, how different... Uh, uh, advantage or disadvantage between China and, and U.S. Mm -hmm. But uh, 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 the other angle I, I, I think, think about, you know, uh, Ch Ch Chinese people or China user is very, very, very huge population. Mm -hmm. uh, ma ma many times, especially in some uh, business model, uh, population means quality. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for example, we, 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 we just passed the 11 11, November 11, uh, yeah. Because uh -huh. uh, 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 at the meantime, the, the, the internet traffic is very, very big. I, I mean, the transaction mm -hmm. at the uh, same time. So, uh, for, for, for Chinese company or Chinese uh, uh, developer, they have the chance or the environment to to develop mm. uh, how to deal with that uh, high, huge no uh, transaction traffic. No company has built the ability no to do that. No other like the ability or chance yeah. to, yeah. to do this. So, so if, I, if I may, so as for the viewers there who are not familiar, 1111, uh -huh. Shuang Yi uh -huh. started in the 90s in Nanjing by some students. They're singles. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to get anything for my, yeah. you know, Valentine's Day, uh -huh. so I'm going to get something for uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. Some bath salts and maybe a candle. Don't judge me, right? Uh -huh. And then Alibaba co-opted 
Shuang Shui Singles Day into the equivalent of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Mm -hmm. That's Except a shrewd company to take a shrewd advantage. company, yeah, right? And so shrewd that you know, let's put it in context. Uh, coming up this Friday in the states, mm -hmm. the Friday after Thanksgiving, the fourth yeah. Thursday, Black Friday. Black Friday. probably going to yeah. do five, six billion dollars mm -hmm. in one day. Last. Last week, Alibaba did 30, 30 billion, billion U.S. dollars. Yes. A right. billion yeah. dollars in the first 85 seconds. Yes. So big, that's the kind of context. Big population is a thing. Mm -hmm. China yeah, China. yeah. 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 No, no, but not necessarily. Napoleon really once big. said, uh, the quality is the biggest quality. What I want to say is that or the, best the number of people is important, but is not the only important Necessary thing. India has a yeah. huge population. Yeah. Yeah. Why India doesn't have this well-developed commerce mm -hmm. landscape is because I think some of their entrepreneurs are not enterprising. The government hasn't been supportive enough. And also the network effect hasn't been working so Which well. Which is back to the point where we had a bit of a frisson. Yeah. My good old friend. So <laughs> you, 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 you cannot it. only have a big population. You have to well-developed yes. manufacturing, uh, communication network, infrastructure, government support. All those things come together mm -hmm. to have a perfect storm for the economy Correct. to go vibrant. And now, yeah. just, just to qualify the point about the role of the public sector in collaborating with the private, because, you know, mm -hmm. as a true entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, don't tread on me. I can mm -hmm. feel that coming up. You need, it's yes and. So the brilliance of what's happened in China is on the furniture, in, in the plumbing, mm -hmm. you need big capex. Mm -hmm. And entrepreneurs running around being innovative mm -hmm. are certainly not the ones who provide coordinated big capex mm -hmm. to enable the connectivity that you talked about mm -hmm. for the first time in Chinese history. And I would argue in human history that you had an integrated uh, civilization that was interconnected when only 5 to 10% of it had hitherto been truly interconnected. Mm -hmm. Wow, what an explosion. That's huge. And that's a lot of government uh, involvement and working on the elements that allowed it to happen to set a stage for actors. Then that's financial reform in fintech, and that's opening the stock market in Shanghai, which happened in 93 as well. Mm -hmm. or, or the 25 billion thrown into the electric vehicle market. Yeah. That's going to move the market and yeah. make China a leader. That's right. just such... Or, uh, or space. A needle mover. Wasn't, yeah. it, wasn't there a big state apparatus in, impact in the U.S. when Kennedy said in, by mm -hmm. the end of this decade, and they were? Mm -hmm. Now, it was maybe driven by competition with, with the Soviets. But nonetheless, it was massive capex but, from the government. All these things you talked about, I think that's why uh, um, some Americans are alarmed mm -hmm. by the speed and the change of speed mm -hmm. in China. Mm -hmm. It is alarming because China has been making this far so quick and mm -hmm. it is gathering speed and yeah. mm -hmm. what's going to happen to that part of humanity is that going to be a threat to us mm. china needs to tell the story it is not necessarily necessarily so mm. yeah. mm -hmm. not because we are more capable mm -hmm. it means that we are a threat mm -hmm. to you to mm -hmm. america mm -hmm. I, I still don't think china is aggressive in nature mm -hmm. china is seeking partners to bring better benefits to all. Hu Weigui is the Chinese basic principle. Yeah. Let me pick up on that because there's a lot of misperceptions out there and I'm going to talk about one that was a lawyer involved with early investments. Greg, you remember those days? Yes, yeah. And in the 90s or in the 80s, a company was evaluated on its profit and loss. Mm -hmm. In the 90s, with the Glass-Steagall Act, removal of a lot of restrictions on investment banks and banking, Suddenly, there was a new idea. It was called um, shareholders' value. Mm -hmm. And companies were not valued on their profit and loss, but how much money they could actually spend, most of it debt raised from the capital markets, on expanding their market. And then, with the emergence of the dot com boom, we had a new concept which runs to today that companies are not even valued on their shareholders' value, but actually on the number of eyeballs or the number of people who are looking at their internet platforms. Mm -hmm. And so we have this thing we always hear in America, oh, they don't allow Facebook in China because they don't allow freedom of communication. But I'll tell you, on WeChat, on Weibo, there's more debate, more argument, sometimes shocking things that are going back and forth. I think a lot more than I see in the American social media, just from my own personal observation. Mm -hmm. So is it that or is it about China saying, look, we've got 1.3 billion eyeballs. Why should I give them to you? Why shouldn't I give them to me? This is about pure business. Why should I throw away my eyeballs? Why don't I build up my technology companies and then take my stuff and go global mm -hmm. with it? 
you're in this business. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. uh, business is business. Uh, every company or every, uh, even every country, they have their own self-interest. That's nature. That's definitely. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, uh, those are my eyeballs. Why I give it to you, right? Um, uh, but uh, um, uh, the, the other angle, I think uh, we, 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 we can do it better. You know, uh, is for, for, for example, uh, how, how Chinese company or Chinese uh, researchers or, or developers can get more uh, information, more uh, conveniently. We, 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 we don't use the, the word freely, but, but, but we can use the word more conveniently, right? From, you know, some uh, cutting edge uh, university research uh, institutions uh, worldwide. So uh, we, uh, uh, to, to, be, to be honest, or, or in, in a more uh, objective uh, 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 position, we, we, we can do it uh, ma ma much better, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, also, I, I would like to share one, one of my uh, personal uh, story. Uh, my, uh, one of my uh, f first job is working for a, a government agency called uh, Ti Gai Wei. Mm -hmm. It means Institutional, uh, Institutional uh, Reform Requirement. Committee. Yeah. It is the pre pre predecessor of today's NDRC, National right. Development sure. uh, Reform Committee, something. Yeah, but uh, uh, so at, at, at the time, um, most of our focus is about how to, you know, uh, uh, at, uh, First thing, or first of all, we have to admit our shortcoming, right? Otherwise, we, we cannot go uh, progress, right? So, uh, so uh, I, I still think uh, we, 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 we can uh, consider everything uh, to be nature, or uh, we, we can uh, admit people's different self-interests, but we still have a, a huge uh, space to go progress. Mm -hmm. To, to be better. Yeah. Right. Richard, you, I mean, you, most, most companies that came into China, they died because of suicide rather than murder, mm -hmm. right? They, yes. they, yeah. they came in and they did things, you know, eBay came in and they bought the number one player in the market. Mm -hmm. And then Jack Ma famously said, you are a shark in the ocean, but we're a crocodile in the Yangtze. And they, uh, and they, and they, quickly, they quickly beat them. But it's also no surprise either that there are non-starters. Facebook was never allowed to play in the sandbox, and neither was Twitter or other ones, right? And it's not a secret. It's just, yeah. it's just that's just not going to work here. And, and that's, that's just the way it is. But there's plenty of other players like LinkedIn or Airbnb or Evernote who have come in and had a, had a modicum of success mm -hmm. without being too uh, fettered by uh, government restrictions. It's just what it really comes down to, and I gave a keynote at um, an Amazon uh, Web Services event last week, learnings that Chinese companies can use from American companies that have died here on what they can learn from when they from go abroad. Right? <laughs> wow. right, exactly. and, and you know, think about the cave in Indiana Jones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he goes in there to get that gold idol, mm -hmm. and right. people are trying to get the prize, right? But you walk in there, and there's skeletons and corpses. People died same way over and over and over again. There's Google, there's MSN, there's Yahoo, there's AOL, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But he finally goes in, and he gets the gold prize, but then the market tries to kill him, the big, the big rock. And then he finally gets out, and then the locals just take it away from him, right? I so, think it has a lot to do with the arrogance of some of the American companies. Mm -hmm. They think they can succeed everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Why not China? Mm -hmm. Why is a different think, ecosystem? Yeah, exactly. It is a different exactly. ecosystem, mm -hmm. and yeah. is a big uh, ecosystem. And I, I spent part of my time in Africa you have to be for humble. the same reason I came to China 31 years ago, because mm -hmm. I find that same kind of sense of opportunity and energy there. Mm -hmm. And roughly speaking, China is to Africa today as the U.S. was to China when I came mm -hmm. representing mm -hmm. HP. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very interesting. And mm -hmm. what you just mm -hmm. said is absolutely true. Need to have you come to lecture to the Chinese companies trying to grab the African market because they're making the same kind of yeah. So, yeah. so it's like that, 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 that arrogance isn't. I think. I think yeah. that it's a universal concept. That's a learning yeah. curve for an outsider company. You know. Sort yeah. Of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and and not not only the arrogance but also the the culture of insensitivity. The, on the, yeah. uh, 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 adaptive to uh, to the to a domestic uh, local uh, yeah. company. Yeah. I, I I can give you guys guys the data. There is only one company in China have no competitor. 
Have you ever seen of this? An American company? Oh, yes. Only one company in China have have no competitor. Intel. Intel, yeah. Cheap sale. That was going to be my uh, cheap guess. Cheap yeah. CPU, no, no, no competitor. And Qualcomm. Every, every other company, if there is a Close. counterpart yeah. or competitor, yeah. the, the final winner will be Chinese company. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we should think about this yeah. deeply. Yeah. Right. Right. Just kind I, of build on to that, although a lot of American companies, they feel, you know, really arrogant to enter the Chinese market, a lot of Chinese markets are doing some really, really good jobs as well. If mm-hmm. you don't have Facebook, we have the Chinese version. Mm-hmm. If you don't have Twitter, mm-hmm. we have the Chinese version. Yeah. Like everything you can find a Chinese yep. version in there, mm-hmm. and they're super successful. So we don't have to have American products. Mm-hmm. You can do it your say, own. Yeah. That's right. Gregory, you just talked about Africa. and. Mm-hmm. Just to sort of shift this a little bit, I've observed in my work in Africa that the Chinese cell phone, the cheap cell phone, has penetrated into some of the most rural parts of Africa, allowing people who could never have finance opportunities, because the banking system in many countries is very antiquated. The banking, the unbanked. The unbanked. And suddenly Mm -hmm. it's liberating people's ability to have financial empowerment through cell phone communication. Yep. Tell us a little bit about your observations. There. Okay. Um, the epicenter of that is in Nairobi, where I have an office and I do business. I, I'm, I'm based in Beijing, Hong Kong, and Nairobi. And um, I love it because it's the China thing coming in, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, especially in mobile payment, WeChat and so forth, there's so much happening here that they're picking up very quickly. Mm-hmm. So they're leaping in Africa on new technologies like happened here 30 years ago when I first came. Mm-hmm. Fiber optic cable. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to line up in Shenyang, Dongbei, Guangxuan, you know. To get my chance at the phone call, this is like your 93 story, 87. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Wait, wait, tickle ching chu. They're only going 10 miles away. Like, you know? And then all of a sudden, fiber optic cable. Boom, onto the internet. So the difference in Africa, though, is that involved huge capex to enable those fundamental networks. Today, the leapfrogs are blockchain, artificial right. intelligence, all right. enabled by mobile, open source. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and uh, capacity, so Wi-Fi capacity. All of those things are now there, and the, the CapEx and OpEx to run and operate and access that is a f- small fraction of what it was in real terms versus the Chinese leap. So it's much less industrially uh, com- uh, intensive in mm-hmm. terms of investment and coordination, mm-hmm. first point. Mm-hmm. Second, as illustrated by the banking, uh, so before M-Pesa, which is Swahili for a mobile wallet or mobile money, mm-hmm. came along about seven years ago, and it's revolutionized all across Africa. They're all cloning M-Pesa. Mm-hmm. There were 5% of the population banked in Kenya. Today, it's 80%, and mm-hmm. it's all on mobile. And the devices are about 30 bucks secondhand. Mm-hmm. An old techno phone or whatever, secondhand techno phone, which is running on Android, mm-hmm. is 30 bucks, and you're, you're laughing. So that's within their accessible wallet. Mm-hmm. Much more so than even it was 10, 15 years ago to a Chinese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yes, I see this really, really unleashing in, in Africa. And much mm-hmm. of that financial work that's being done through mobile fi- phone financing yeah. is being run by women's groups mm-hmm. in Africa. Yep. And I think, Li Jiao, mm-hmm. you were telling me that you were doing some research on women's groups that were using technology in rural parts of yep. China. W- where was it? Gansu? Or? Yeah, Gansu province. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's in the northwest or northwest, yeah. That's one of the yeah. poorest provinces in China, it is, is that right? It is. Mm-hmm. I actually took a visit to this lady. Um, she was in, she was like um, 53 years old, um, my parents' age. But given the fact that she lived literally on the cliff of a mountain, it's that remote. But she can still own a successful, super successful e-commerce business. I actually took a look um, just months ago, two months ago. Um, I did this package. So take a look at her story and we will talk later. Jing was one of the first villagers to take a leap of faith and sell her produce online. But joining the digital world was no easy task. The Qingshui County government offered training classes for villagers to help them navigate the complex digital landscape. Mm-hmm. 
，我们一下就给他们从这个问题上理清，知道，一个是从内幕到处实操了，让他们从这个思想的认识，再到通过自己能收，自己能学会，自己来用，让他发展一个人，再带动一一大批这个高端。One of the lessons Jing learned was to ease customers' concerns about the quality of their purchases. That's why she decided to give prospective buyers a taste of her farm produce by filming the orchard where she grow apples. Her business eventually took off, and word of mouth brought even more buyers to her online store. Through hard work and patience, she paid off her debt and began saving money. Qingshui County's total online trade volume was over 60 million yuan in 2017, 20 million of which was from the sale of apples, and farmers' direct earnings accounted for 5 million yuan. Over the next five years, the majority of agricultural products will be sold online, accounting for 20% of the total sales by the end of 2018 and 40% by 2020. <laughs> Villagers like Jing in far flung rural areas across the country are riding the wave of online shopping. They hope to improve their living standards, but they know it won't happen at the touch of a button. It's really an incredible package. Did you actually do that yourself? You I did it myself, yeah. Wow, wow. And I know. So, I mean, what does that tell you about someone 53 years old learning technology and now using that to really create an international business right. in a I remote think area? She's a very inspiring person. Like, even if she's 53 years old living in super remote villages, she still, like, really want to put herself into the high tech industry. And Adele, I know you and I are really into the same age range. And uh, do you think young people can really lead this whole society into a more uh, pro tech society? You think? Yeah, I guess. How do you think uh, our young generation can affect the whole society? Yeah, since we're both the um, you know natives in this uh, technology era, mm -hmm. um, it's actually what I notice is that um, young people are using technology to bridge um, you know the communication with even older people in the more traditional industries which did not make use of technology. Um, for example, recently I was working with an NGO um, who's going to hold this conference, and you know usually invites um, you know the policymakers and all the um, you know, local ambassadors, um, you know, to their conference. But um, when they um, notice that, well, they want to have a smoother kind of process of registration, mm -hmm. they want to develop this app that can be used for, you know, the conference and showing uh, the profiles of, um, you know, panelists and the schedules. And um, then, um, you know, the job was on me to find um, younger people who are, you know, who, w who have the skill set to um, you know, develop these things. So you know, they are um, bringing um, technology into traditional industries such as um, you know, maybe uh, NGOs uh, with 
prestige, but who did not have access to, you know, like creating websites or creating apps. They're not even ads. immigrants yet. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. And yeah. they are trying to become immigrants into this new, new found land. Yeah, yeah. everything ha- ha- has its uh, good side and bad side, mm-hmm. uh, positive and negative. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, we already discussed uh, uh, m- many about the uh, positive thing, and I-, I would like to add some uh, negatives, uh, negative thing. Uh, I, I just read a news. Uh, la- last month, there is a, a U.S. company called uh, IPO called Upwork. Upwork is a freelancer platform for uh, pr- professionals. And it, 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 they, they, they raise about uh, uh, 100 million U.S. dollar and e- evaluation to 1 billion. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they have a, a data show um, maybe uh, tw- in 2020, it's only two two years from now. Uh, there will be fifty percent people will be freelancer. Mm. Mm. Can you imagine? The, mm. Also, another data show. Uh, right now, uh, for a new uh, fresh uh, graduate college student, uh, when he uh, graduate from the university, maybe he or she uh, should be in his uh, twenty twenty two or twenty three age. Uh, but uh, when he in, uh, arrived, he's uh, 30, 30 years old. Maybe he he can only change two to three uh, different jobs. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, the data show uh, maybe in uh, twenty thirty, uh, th- 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 this time period people will change maybe two hundred to three hundred different jobs. Why? Because every people will become freelancer. Mm-hmm. Every people they can only have chance to get trans, uh, temporary job, mm-hmm. because yeah. the blockchain, the AI will maybe will destroy many many traditional tra- corporate yeah. structures, traditional exactly. job positions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. We have to be lifetime learner mm-hmm. in this age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to evolve your skills. You have to learn different things all the time. Because uh, technology has been changing the way we consume information, we make stuff, we communicate. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a different age. We have to be mm-hmm. uh, evolved faster than before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking Isn't that of the, this, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, this um, you know, trend of freelancers, so with social media, everybody has become sort of, uh, you know, the zi mei ti, uh, you promote yourself. Self-employment. Exactly. Self-employment in this, um, you know, in this process. Everybody posts pictures on WeChat moments, mm-hmm. on Facebooks, you know, and um, in Instagram, this has become an industry. Um, yeah. The followers, they are called influ- uh, the people with, um, you know, tremendous amount of Im- uh, um, followers. They're called uh, influencers now yeah. and, and then they get deals and they exactly kind of money, yeah. they uh, you know they get jobs like oh yeah. uh, you know they go to hotels and different resort yeah. lands for free because hotels would like to you know send them emails saying that well welcome to our hotel and right. give it a try and post it on your instagram right. because there are going to be millions of people who can see those images and then they promote the hotel and these influencers enjoy free vacations you know they become you know what they wear Thousands of people are going to buy it from the link that they provide in the Instagram. That's so, in marketing. Exactly. Well, what yeah. I, what I think I just heard here also, which mm-hmm. that's an example, is yeah. um, in blockchain, and we're both working in blockchain, yep. mm-hmm. um, a better way to understand blockchain is called distributed ledger technology, where mm-hmm. we all share, share right. one ledger. You don't have all the lawyers and accountants and insurance people from 50 different points in the chain mm-hmm. having their own books and reconciling them. So it's mm-hmm. enormously disruptive mm-hmm. and, and productive. Mm-hmm. Even It's like the internet on steroids, right? So it's not the information net now, it's the asset. Net. Mm. Now it's being applied to supply chains. Of course, mm-hmm. Bitcoin applies it to financial transactions, mm-hmm. and, but supply chains of assets and physical things, so you can track mm-hmm. honest goods, like it's real life, oh, not a fake, or it's mm-hmm. real go- uh, drugs, not fake. Mm-hmm. And it has huge social impact. Mm-hmm. What's really interesting, and what you're saying is, is the personalization of your job capability, as, mm-hmm. as it were, your CV and, your, and all of that, your associations and your networks that you can bring to bear, is an asset, yep. and in this way, mm-hmm. is also on the chain. So you can plug and play physical things, mm-hmm. capabilities, networks, mm-hmm. increasingly seamlessly. Mm-hmm. And, and with AI kind of guiding you as, as to how to do it. They'll actually come to you, right. like you said earlier, mm-hmm. and they say, oh, we know that you need this to buy, but now it'll be, we know you can do this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And without much effort, you can get up in the morning and just take three or four offers if you're good. So you and, th- and choose the one that you want to do. Do you them. think with this blockchain technology, it will be a 
paradigm shift technology. Well, it, is. it is already happening. That will change everything yeah. upside down. But again, it's happening in the infrastructure. So Maersk is working with IBM and Microsoft and there's other great initiatives in China as well that are now actually instantiating it. So end to end, any any kind of faking or and, touching or whatever. And, and, and which society or, or, or country do you think uh, are in better position to first apply this technology? Is it America? Is it China? Because of different political Excellent system. Excellent question. I, I think it has more to do with legacy. 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 Yeah. yeah. So if you have, for example. Uh, one of the reasons why things jumped faster further in China yeah. is because you didn't have sunk in the ground mm -hmm. old compute centers mm -hmm. with networks and switches that had to have their return on in capital investment, right? Mm -hmm. So you had CFOs going, no, we won't buy the new stuff because, no, it was all new. It was Greenfield. So buy the latest and, you know, back so it we, up. So we don't have that much baggage, so we will move and, fast. And now we have a little bit more baggage than before because you've been <laughs> involved heavily mm -hmm. in the inf informatics infrastructure for 10, 20 years, but relatively less, yes. Uh, but then that's what's interesting about even newer, less developed markets like India and Africa. Mm -hmm. They don't, they, they got none of it. They, they mm -hmm. don't have copper wire. They, they're just getting fiber but optic. I got an impression that uh, blockchain technology is a decentralized technology. Well, it can be used either in a, a so-called public or private aspect or uh, um, anonymous or or known. So mm -hmm. um, the, the Bitcoin famously is, is anonymous, right? And that poses all kinds of issues. And nobody's but sitting then, on then top of everything. But then there can be a sovereign version where there is the ability to come in for whatever reasons to, to monitor what's going on. So it, it's a complicated area, what you're talking about. But it is evolving in many different ways. Just like uh, cloud is on-prem in the cloud and mixed. Mm. You have these different paradigms that, that are emerging in, in distributed ledger technology. Talking about new technologies, 5G. I'm mm. hearing that this is the word in the market. China's mm. going to launch 5G. What is it? How's it going to change the platform? How's it going to change the way we live and think? Mm. Oh, well, here we go again, right? Yeah, big question. <laughs> Do you remember, big question. Richard, it was all this stuff. 3G's coming soon. Yeah. Now 5G. And then five 5G. years of marketing yeah. and summits. And 3G, it's coming. 3G, it's mm -hmm. here. And then it was 3.5. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the edge and, and enhanced edge and then 4G, yeah. yeah. So I think it's, it's another turn of the wheel. And what it is is it's the capacity of the networks, the ability to process um, complex data packages, video, real-time interaction, uh, just becomes more and more rentable, as they say in French, more and more accessible economically. Mm -hmm. The devices, power, the network's capacity, um, all comes down into uh, reliable and economically accessible. Mm -hmm. So you can do more jobs, more complicated jobs, and you can have more people involved in mm -hmm. doing it. So it's just yet another log on an ongoing bonfire, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now, the interesting thing that you mentioned about China, China has moved from, if you look at the history from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5G, China and 1G, basically, there was no telephony, right? Mm. In 2G, they were the big market, and they were playing GSM off of Qualcomm. Ooh. CDMA. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of like reverse engineering and learning as they went along. This is all this where I say the government plays a role, right? And, and then 3G, TDS CDMA. They took the Siemens technology, the third ITO standard, uh, which is TDS CDMA, and they we got Datong working on it and they kind of worked it and worked it and worked it. Then China Mobile had to deploy it, no mm -hmm. choice. <clears throat> that was a heavy lift and that was probably billions of dollars of opportunity cost frankly, if they had just gone with the latest versions of the other two. Mm -hmm. But boy, did they learn that yeah. tuition was there, yeah. and now they know how to play global standards. Yeah. So now if you look in the ITU and the committees, That's the Chinese are pay. there more and more and more, and they're writing more and more on the, on the, on the policy side as well as on the, on the software side of these standards. So that by 4G, you had TDLTE, mm -hmm. which was kind of up there with FD, right? So it's kind of like toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And in 5G, I think you can collectively say, between Huawei, ZTE, and the others, that they're leading the parade, or at least they're right up there with Ericsson and some of the other yeah. players. Right? Th there will be competition of standards, yeah. startups. Standards, but I mean, mm -hmm. well, you can see this progressive capacity enhancement, mm -hmm. uh, which, which allows for uh, the IP portfolio to be shared yeah. more, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you get a greater collective. Once again, when it's collaborative with constructive dynamic tension, it works. Mm -hmm. If we harved off into separate uh, networks, mm -hmm. you know, all together, uh, everything I said It seems to be apart. happening because the American mm -hmm. Decision makers want to decouple yeah. what there, is going on in the US this. and what is going on in China. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't want Huawei and ZTE to get into the American market. They don't want to sell even chips to China, yeah. which is, in my opinion, is very stupid idea. Richard, are you doing any investments on startups for chips or 5G? What do you look at? Uh, I just think of 5G as another resource. You know, yeah. they asked Jeff Bezos from Amazon, 
uh, what do you think is going to happen in the future? And he's like, well, instead of thinking about all the possibilities that what could happen, think about what's not going to change. Mm -hmm. People are going to want more choice, uh, you know, great quality, and they're going to want it cheaper and faster, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So the, the, those, if you just play to those uh, desires, then you can be successful. People want stuff faster. Yeah. Uh, this whole hedonic adaptation where we we live better than the guy who used to live in the for you know in the in in, in Google right just a, a couple of hundred years ago right everybody's life gets better and better and better yeah. Yeah. and you just want more and more and more and mm -hmm. I want things faster and I want more data. It's like the Olympics, faster, you know? higher, better. So so that that's just a rising tide that lifts all yeah. boats. Like I think about, for instance, like mobile payments. Yeah. How China is you know. Oldest society, largest society in the world, but a half decade ahead of any other place on the planet when it comes to mobile payments. And uh, it's now changed the fabric of society. Yeah. Where mm -hmm. I'll tell a story, I went, I went camping with my kids, mm -hmm. American Boy Scouts. There's some, some guys there from uh, the American Embassy. They have a, a Blackberry because mm -hmm. they can't use an old phone. So right. they, they don't have WeChat, and I can't pay them by WeChat. <laughs> so I go, I go to the guy at the, at the, at the camping site. I was like, what's the closest uh, ATM? And he's like 10 kilometers away. And I'm like, wow, I don't even know if I remember my ATM password anyway. <laughs> he goes, why? And I said, I need some cash. And he goes, oh, no problem. Just give me money, and I'll give you the money back. I'll give you cash back, and you can pay those guys. And I thought, cash well, now everybody's an ATM. That's a cash generation. Everybody's we are cash. Everybody's an ATM, right? right? So, so, so that sort of payment infrastructure has now seeded all of these new startups where you don't need to bring a battery with you anymore. You can find batteries everywhere and just be able to, to rent it and then put that back in a bicycle and mm. umbrella, and it, it started this whole sharing economy. Mm. So 5G is going to just open up even you know, more opportunities when it comes to... And another thing about 5G is that with 4G, 3G, we just talk to each other or businesses. With 5G, different things are talking to different mm. things. Mm -hmm. That's Internet of Things. Yeah. That means your washing machine is talking to a refrigerator, mm -hmm. uh, your lamp is talking to your radio, everything is connected, and the driverless car society. Your car is talking to the car beside it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your car is talking to all the infrastructure. But also, especially vi posts. visualization. And visualization. At, at, at high uh, precision. It, it can yeah. read you, it can yeah. recognize you. All stuff around you is digitized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That will be a totally different society. Mm -hmm. And China is very enthusiastic to go all the steam in. So think about that. We're going to start a dating app for refrigerators. <laughs> <laughs> Swipe right if you really like it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Alex, but, what are you looking to invest in? Yeah, I, uh, I, I very like his topic. I, I would like to uh, give some more inputs uh, for some... Uh, deeper thinking. Uh, I, I, I think from this view, we, we, we should learn from uh, US people. Because uh, we, uh, even, even Chinese people, they have some ability or they have some talent to do more uh, advantaged, uh, 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 advanced uh, technology uh, development, but they still lack of one uh, capacity. I, uh, I, I call it the uh, concept creation capacity. Mm -hmm. let, 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 let me show you some example. Uh, uh, US people, they, they create a, a very huge uh, industry called uh, Internet of Things, mm -hmm. IoT. Internet yeah. of things. Or now they call it IOE, Internet of Everything. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the fundamental support uh, technology, just very small sensor. They, 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 can use, they can use a very simple technology to create a very huge, say, uh, trillions level uh, industry, like, like IoT. Uh, th this is one example. The other example is, is, is blockchain. Mm. What blockchain, uh, the, the, the background support talk the technology, actually is it, it, still very simple. Many people or, or research company they can they can do it uh, several decades ago. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the the blockchain uh, the technology uh, supporting technology only some like a distribute uh, security database, mm -hmm. right? It's not difficult technology. Mm -hmm. I, I know many Chinese uh, company or, or re research house they can they can do it, but they lack of one capacity. What that, that's what I mean. We we, we should learn from. 
U U.S. people. Uh, they, they, they can, by leveraging a, a, a technology concept and by create a new industry. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't, don't, uh, don't look, look uh, neglect of, of this, this capacity. The it's yeah. very important. It's very I know. Important. I think the Americans are better at uh, producing inventors and creators. But the Chinese are good at uh, making users and, uh, uh, and uh, distributors. Because maybe the Chinese are not at this stage right now to have uh, very original creation at this moment. That probably will change down the road. Mm -hmm. But the Chinese are very driven to use the current technologies available and amplify its use. Mm -hmm. And that will change the world in mm -hmm. its own way. Mm -hmm. And that is why I think China and the U.S. has all the reasons mm -hmm. to cooperate. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Now, you look at the trade war that's occurring, you look at all of this reaction, how is it going to affect America's own technology industry? Isn't the majority of people who are working in Silicon Valley actually Asian? I mean, the people who are programming, who are creating, who are behind the scenes, not the CEOs you see making big speeches. Oh, those too. Yeah, hmm. but aren't they? They're Chinese and Indian, most of them, the CEOs. Yeah. Right, and yeah. so what, I mean, or Asian. How, how is this attempt now to actually deglobalize, which is taking place with the Trump regime and the administration, um, how is that affecting actually not China's tech industry, but ultimately America's tech industry? Adele, you just came back from America. What do you think? What do you see? Huh. Well, for me, I noticed something also that, um, you know, with all these advancements, these, um, you know, gentlemen were talking about. Um, but, you know, in there's something interesting that's also happening that um, in the richer areas or populations, um, schools uh, for young people, um, they're actually curbing the use of technology. So in class and school, you're just not supposed to carry any um, mobile phones or uh, even laptops sometimes. Um, and other places where um, it's quite poor, um, they are actually promoting the access of technology. So, you know, uh, that's both happening in China and the U.S. And, you know, with this trade war going on, I think, you know, the manufacturing Manufacturing and, and um, you know some of the uh, goods that are produced in China are going to be affected. But you know, in terms of technology, everywhere is connected. And um, with all this, and uh, you know, it, we were talking about all these advancements, but um, the things that we also need to be cautioned with is that uh, with these advancements, there are drawbacks, and especially in young people's growth. Um, that we have to, you know, just pay attention to. And everybody's, you know, even I personally, I don't use um, my uh, social media or phones that much. I don't really post too many things on my social media. But um, recently, iPhone came up with this, like, screen time function. And you can see how, um, on, on average, how many hours you use your phone every day. And I even have, like, five to six hours every day, and I had no idea where that come from. And I can't imagine, you know, you guys who are, you know, in the leading, you know, the, the leading uh, steps of uh, technology, how many hours you use it and everybody else, and we don't, you know, have too many personal interactions anymore, and those are things that need to, you know, we need to be worried about. You've just asked a very provocative question. Is technology deprogramming us? And we yeah. think about it, you know, years ago, you know, we were talking about Boy Scouts, we used yeah. maps. We were able to follow the stars. Now, uh, most people I know today can't even find like, their own kitchen without a GPS. <laughs> I'm from Hawaii. That's my state. And our ancestors used to cross the Pacific just looking at the stars. They had no GPS. Mm -hmm. So what's happening? Are we losing something by gaining something? <laughs> we, we are not deprogrammed. <laughs> <laughs> we are not deprogrammed. Are we supposed to go yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah I, you know, yeah. I, um, you look at Silicon Valley and a lot of the leaders in Silicon Valley don't allow their children mm -hmm. to have much screen time. Mm -hmm. And there, there, there is a, uh, there's a limit. Uh, and I try to impose that limit onto my children as well, too. But, okay. Any know, success? Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> they find a way. It's a constant, uh, a constant yeah. battle, right? Yeah. But but you talk about China and the U.S. and I believe in uh, engagement and I believe in entanglement and it is just the, the the food coloring is already in the swimming pool 
and you can splash around and protest it as much as possible, as uh, much as you want, mm -hmm. but it's not going to change things. We, yeah. we are inextricably uh, linked, the, the, the China and the U.S., and tech is uh, something that has made it so. Has made it so, and um, you know, I, I believe at least you know, with you know, ethical, you know, economic uh, in, engagement. Through, through tech, that's that's what I. Yeah, mm -hmm. it reminds, I it reminds me of the. On. You may remember the first or was it the second of the Jurassic Park movies. I think it was the second. It was the sequel, and, and the character of Jeff Goldblum is you know the crusty commentator in the elevator uh, in the helicopters. They're flying over the scene, and they, they these. Uh, dinosaurs, T. Rexes, had reproduced, and that wasn't part of what was supposed to be. They're supposed to be able to not reproduce, and and they're wondering why it happened. And he just says, "Nature finds a way." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you put in these barriers, mm -hmm. especially now that we're so integrated on not just networks but on mm -hmm. GitHub's yeah. and and communities of contribution, collaboration, and creativity, right. inextricably linked, mm -hmm. it's a moot point to even try. And to the extent that well, no, I, I, I'm not saying that there isn't fair, fair trade and, and mm -hmm. certain degree of management and policy implication. There is. It's not like binary. Mm -hmm. But to really try to put it back in the paradigm of the old protectionist order mm -hmm. is, uh, I, I can't see how it will happen because uh, the productivity will just move to where there's the least opposition. Right, the networks will, will morph, mm -hmm. whether it's in uh, geographies here or there and yeah. the new points of combination, which are more That's welcoming good. environments, nature will find a way. I totally agree. Uh, those politicians and their policies are just a blip on the radar. Mm -hmm. Nature would take its course. Technology and economy will go with the flow. You, you mm -hmm. can't run against it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can look at trying to uh, compensate for the effects of it. Uh, for example, a lot of the... Uh, uh, systematic loss of jobs in the more developed economies. Perhaps in hindsight there could have been better social economic planning and policy mm -hmm. to up the capacity skills, make it so that they could on ramp mm -hmm. more with the world the way it was going, was overseen and there was a systematic dropping of the ball. Mm -hmm. right? About that deep programming thing, I think uh, it will liberate another parts of mind brain capacity. Yep. I don't believe that I will be left uh, jobless because uh, AI uh, anchors taking over my job. I can do more creative and fun things instead of just uh, news reading uh, you can do comedy. in a studio. Because oh. the human mind is just very capable. Yeah. We haven't yeah. tapped into its potential yes, as sure. we wished. Mm -hmm. That will liberate our minds and, and explore our humanity to do mm -hmm. things that we couldn't imagine we could do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would love to, to, to grab onto that. So Kaifu Lee, uh, he had a great TED talk in August. He wrote a book called AI Superpowers, talking about the US mm -hmm. and China. I had breakfast with him uh, last month um, around the American Chamber of Commerce. And uh, he has ultimately a very humanistic and very uh, optimistic view of what AI can do. If you think about 100 something years ago, 85% of all jobs were in agriculture, mm -hmm. and 95% of those jobs are gone. If you told those people then, they'd be losing their minds. They couldn't even imagine. So we are I, I actually, you know, the, uh, America laments that a lot of jobs are, are lost to China, but a lot of jobs are lost to robotics, and a lot more jobs are going to be lost to AI. That's actually going to be a problem. It, it is going to be a problem that is going to cause some social upheaval. Everywhere. But ultimately, mm -hmm. you talked about healthcare and AI. My sister's mm -hmm. a nurse. She's in the intensive care unit. She spends 90% of her time doing all of the things that she needs to do to do her job, 10% of the time with the patient. Yeah. What if AI could free her to do 30% with three different patients of her time and then 10% yeah. doing other things and doing it better? Uh, and I think ultimately that's what AI is going to mm -hmm. allow us to do is to be able to remove all of these rote, the uh, yeah. repetitive exactly. tasks and yeah. to be able to connect more with each other. Yeah. And Kai Fu Lee's, uh, as a thought leader, says, I need to be optimistic so that I can have that, that, that seed planted yeah. so that mm -hmm. I can put that into people's minds. So we're not talking about deprogramming. We're talking about reprogramming. Is that right, Alex? Yeah. And uh, I... I I would like to give some uh, more feedback from uh, an, an, another angle. From uh, le, 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 let's talk something about a uh, technology philosophy. Mm -hmm. Why why we feel scared? Why we feel uh, peop, human being will become you know the de deprogramming or, or reprogram? And and uh, uh, what, what, what will 
what, what is our uh, fundamental or, or deep uh, scare or, or, or motivation? I, I think uh, we, we, we scare about we to become not that human, mm. right? Uh, the, the, there is a famous, uh, there is a famous futurist uh, called uh, uh, Marshall McLuhan. Marshall McLuhan. Yeah. Mark, Marshall McLuhan. Uh, he, 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 he's the guy uh, coined the concept called a uh, global village. Yep. Mm -hmm. Many, and the, many And the years medium ago. is the message. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and at the first day, when uh, when he heard there is a, a company create an. A, 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 a new product called computer. So he coined this, the, this, uh, the, the, this concept. Uh, that, that's today's internet. Uh, he, 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 he died at uh, uh, year 2000. And uh, at, at that day, uh, New York Times uh, write a very long article and say, after 50 years, finally, uh, 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 the war uh, catch up with Mark and yeah, yeah. uh, he, he, he has a very famous uh, conclusion. Technology is the best or the most humanity. Mm. Let, 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 let's think about this. Uh, for, for, for a single person or single hu human body, we, we have two parts. One is uh, from animal. Uh, yep. One is from human. Yeah. What, 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 what is technology? Technology means uh, human knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I totally agree his conclusion, technology is very humanity, mm -hmm. or is the most humanity. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 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 the other uh, uh, futurist, uh, his name is uh, Kevin Kelly. He's also an internet guru uh, in, 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 in uh, worldwide. Uh, he, he also have a, a conclusion, said uh, technology, he think technology is the only progress of human being, only progress. People may argue, uh, what about institution? What about uh, society uh, system? Uh, if we consider it, this in, 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 or we or, or observe it, it, it in a deeper way, Every system change, every institutional change depends on technology change. Mm. Otherwise, you cannot sustainable. Mm. Just to yeah. add to that, and then, you know, uh, just now we were talking about technology development and then replacing humans. But, you know, recently we have uh, the very uh, first AI anchor that came out to, um, you know, broadcast news. And um, also very recently, like in Beijing, there's the very first uh, surgery that was done by uh, a robot cla in collaboration with a surgeon. And that was a tremendously difficult uh, surgery. And without the help of the robot, it wasn't, um, you know, going to be likely to succeed. Um, so, you know, this with all that, and, um, you know, technology is really helping humans to do their job and so that we can be freed up to do you know um other you to know get on social media. things yeah like to, to, to do better and Waste you know to fishing. study so technology 18 hours a day on the screen <laughs> yeah, well see now, so it's you know really today different. we've been talking looking back 40 years looking at the present as we conclude the day mm -hmm. i'm going to ask each of you to project 40 years ahead mm -hmm. what will china and the world look like with technology, AI, quantum communication, all these things, decades in the future. Alex, we'll start with you. Okay, yeah, I, 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 I'm happy to, uh, very happy to answer this, this question because uh, I'm just doing a, a similar thing. Uh, we, 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 we translate a book called uh, 50 Years Since, Since Today. Uh, the, 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 the chief editor is a famous uh, media person, uh, uh, Mike Wallace. He, he, he made uh, about uh, uh, 60 uh, interview for some uh, uh, famous uh, person like uh, country leaders, like uh, Nobel Prize winners. Now uh, 10 years passed and, uh, uh, and Mike, uh, Mike Wallace also passed. So, 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 so we plan to take his job to continue to estimate another uh, next uh, 50 years since, since, since now. Uh, 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 
uh, according to the research of, of those Nobel Prize winner, I, I, I think their their conclusion or their estimate, uh, we, we we can consider like a very high weight, uh, high weight uh, 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 because uh, they are the person who bring us today's war and tell us about the future's war. For for example. Uh, maybe 20 or, or 30 years later, you, you can download your brain you, you, or, or you can up, upload your brain to, to the mm -hmm. internet. Every people's brain can, can connect or, or communicate uh, together or, 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 or each other. But uh, be, be careful about the, the virus, be careful about the security issue. And also, for example, uh, uh, the, 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 there is a technology uh, I, I, I know uh, maybe uh, Oxford or Cambridge Un uh, University lab already doing a sort of research. Uh, they, 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 are, they are working on uh, material transportation. Uh, now, now we can trans transfer uh, information, mm. image, right? But the uh, future, uh, who knows, maybe 30 or, or 40 years later, we, we, we can uh, tra trans transport our our body our physical material like star wars yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right so, yeah. so maybe maybe through through a a, 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 a wormhole yeah. Yeah. Worm yeah. okay yeah. Oh, wow. so wormholes okay um my, mine's more to the ground uh that's really <laughs> fascinating wormholes um it may surprise you if technology is the uh, distinctive expression of humanity then the future 40 years is where humanity is uh, it was 40 years ago, only about 20% was in the subcontinents of India and Africa. Mm -hmm. 40 years from now, it will be 50%, and it will be 75% of people under 50. 75% mm -hmm. mm. of people under 50, which is where the uh, human technology will primarily be evolved to solve problems there. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a bit surprising, but now, why is it, you could say, oh, they don't have the money in the CapEx and all that. Remember, it's becoming less CapEx intensive. Mm -hmm. It's becoming more and more accessible and, and uh, to, to, to simply more and more capable devices that interact and GitHubs, mm -hmm. social networks. Mm -hmm. So any effort to try to do it through the old nation state models or groupings of trade zones and all that by 40 years from now will be futile. It'll just be where the people are interacting and mm -hmm. creating and sharing technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Adult, so, yeah. Um, to me, I guess uh, in 40 years or 50 years, um, I'll be the guys, uh, I'll be the one probably who still physically exists. Um, I and, think uh, I have oh, longevity. You will, yeah, <laughs> okay. And healthcare, you know, may improve and all of us will, you know, still we'll be together. Yes. And, oh, or maybe like Alex said, and, you know, all of, the, all of your brain will be, you know, the in a computer. Be in the and, yeah. Yeah, People be, will become yeah. a long life, long journey. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you around. Um, so anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, so I would be most looking forward to, you know, space travel um, and uh, how AI and uh, all uh, machine learning along with machine learning and um, our uh, robotics can collaborate with humans and um, you know to make our lives better for mm -hmm. yeah you know I um, I'm 51 and I believe um, in the future you could probably in the next 20 years add a year to your life every year that you're alive so I hope that I'm around for this um, who knows? Sure. Who knows anything right. a, you know, a, anymore? I, I, all I know is this, is that we think linearly, but things happen in uh, an exponential way. Mm -hmm. And uh, things are going to be really heating up uh, even more so in the next few decades. So it okay. should be fun to watch. Yes. Mm -hmm. I asked you by the opening to report, tell me the three big technology breakthroughs you reported on. Mm -hmm. Now, projecting 40 years ahead, what will be the next wow. three big the three technology headlines. breakthroughs? Yeah. Uh, by looking at the past 40 years and the speed of change, I can only say that a future we can imagine now is not going to be the future. The only thing we are certain is nothing is certain. So uh, Socrates says that a life that is not examined is not worth living. I would say a life that hasn't been explored is worth living. So I think the future is something we have to explore. And right. Lee Jiao. 
tell me, what are you going to be doing 40 years from now, and what will the state of technology look like? Well, 40, after 40 years, I think I'll still be with CGTN. Um, but who knows? I'll probably do life as, you know, do life as with an AI anchor in Mars through our satellite station or something like that. <laughs> with quantum communications. So, be, yeah. Can imagine. Who knows? CGTN in the future mm -hmm. will be live streaming to you from Mars, Pluto, <laughs> and Jupiter. Yeah. But today, we're reporting on China, 40 years of reform and opening the future Cyber Silk Road from Kerry Center, yep. Beijing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We look forward Thank to you seeing so you tomorrow.